In today's episode, we'll be covering the different types of errors that can occur when you're programming and what causes them. Now, when you're writing code, you have to understand that things go wrong sometimes, and the code doesn't always work as you intended it to. We programmers call these errors, and while annoying, they help us sharpen our skills and become better at coding. Often referred to as bugs, errors in scripting languages can be narrowed down to one of three types of errors, syntax, runtime, and logic, all three of which we will be covering in today's episode. To start off, let's talk about syntax errors. These are usually the easiest of the three to solve, since they are something that can be fixed within seconds. If you remember back to our video on syntax and programming rules, we said that if you were to break the programming rules or syntax, that it would result in an error. This can be anything, from forgetting a semicolon at the end of a statement in Java, accidentally defining a variable with two words instead of one, or even just misspelling the word string when you're trying to define a string variable. Luckily, these errors are extremely easy to fix since you just need to figure out where the error occurred and what syntax rule you broke. Now back in our IDE video, we mentioned that IDEs are so useful because they do precisely that. They underline the error and usually provide helpful hints as to how to fix them. Think of syntax errors as small misspellings or grammar errors in an essay you're writing. Annoying, yes, but not the most infuriating things. Another useful thing about IDEs when it comes to syntax errors is that the program will often not let you run the code unless all the syntax errors are debugged, making them even easier to identify, especially since they are usually underlined in red by the IDE. The second type of error we will be covering is the runtime error. These errors don't usually show up until you actually run the code, hence the name runtime error. They're usually caused by something in the code that seems logically sound, but the computer has no way of computing it in a reasonable amount of time. The most common of these errors is what is known as an infinite loop. Think of an infinite loop like this. Let's say you sat your friend down in front of the TV, put the office on repeat, and told him that he could leave as soon as Michael made a that's what she said joke. Seems pretty simple, right? Except what if instead of putting in the office, you accidentally put in friends? No Michael, no inappropriate joke, meaning your friend would be sitting there for the rest of his life. This is essentially what happens with the computer. You give it some condition that it has to complete before the program can terminate. However, you give it no feasible way to finish that task. This puts the computer in error mode and most likely will crash your program, as the computer desperately tries to complete the condition you gave it. To avoid these, you generally want to think about the flow of your code before running it to make sure that not only it works correctly, but also that it has some way to terminate if things were not to go as smoothly as you had planned them to go. Plan out your code before you begin writing, and you'll have a lot more success with reducing runtime errors. The final type of error that we will be covering is a logic error. This error is also pretty cut dry. A logic error occurs when the code runs smoothly without any runtime or syntax errors, but the result that you get isn't exactly what you expected or wanted. For example, let's say that you had a calculator app, except whenever you try to add two numbers together, it ends up multiplying them instead. Nothing specifically went wrong with the code syntax or runtime wise, it just doesn't work as you intended. These are often the hardest types of errors to debug, since most of the time you'll have no idea why the code isn't working and certainly not any idea of how to fix it. This is why it's a good idea to test your code incrementally don't wait until you've been programming for an hour before testing your application, or else you'll run into a lot of logic errors. Logic errors can be extremely frustrating and could cost you a lot of time, making them a huge pain. But if you know how to effectively debug your code, something we'll be talking about in the next episode, you'll be perfectly well off. That's all for today's episode. In the next episode, we'll be breaking each type of error that I talked about today and how to debug it efficiently without just plugging it into Stack Overflow. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider subscribing to the left for more wacky and zany videos. And if you'd like to see the series as a whole, please click the playlist to the right. Thanks for watching.